Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back to the channel, I hope you are still doing well because this is the second video of the day and in this video we speak only about Serie A, about the 20 teams that will participate in Serie A 24-25, we will rank their mercato. I didn't do it before because I started receiving your questions, Beppe what about Milan, look at that, they signed Morata. What about Inter that won Serie A, how they are, are they reinforcing themselves, Lazio, Como, Venezia etc 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 i told you and i always repeated it i don't care i don't want to know i don't want to hear about it i will not inform myself about their movements because mercato is too long first i need to focus on juve from the first of august i will start giving an eye looking at it from a far perspective to start informing myself today we are the first of august and not only i checked a bit but i also made that ranking from the worst team that is moving at today until the one that did at the moment according to me the best mercato so far don't forget before entering in the teams and that ranking what is right today can be totally wrong tomorrow because tomorrow a team goes with three top phenomena and that change that ranking totally i'm also not giving you a prediction of Serie A. I'm not giving you the total value of the team if they are strong or not. It's not because one will be higher than the other that it's stronger. But I'm speaking only purely about in and out Mercato and also the coach that they have chosen for their team. Are you ready to start? Not yet, because you didn't put a maximum of likes. So maximum of likes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now we are ready to start with position number 20. The worst one, according to me, Udinese. Last year they fought for avoiding relegation until match day 38. They risked a lot, but seriously, so much. At the moment, at today, they didn't sign any good player. They lost Wallace Pereira, but they didn't sign. They changed the coaches through, they go with Runjaic, but that's it. For the rest, they didn't move on the Mercato. And I believe that you don't even have one month of Mercato, huh? Because they start Serie A on the 18th of August. So in 18 days you start and you didn't change anything in your team. According to me, at the moment, Udinese, they are really in a rush. They are really needing in a rush moment of Mercato. Otherwise, they are going straight to Serie B in 25-26. Disaster for Udinese. 19th position, Monza. You lose Di Gregorio, you don't replace him. You lose Colpani to Fiorentina, you don't replace him. The only player that could potentially enter your starting eleven is Forson, that you took as a free agent. There is a lot to do. Especially because, and that's my opinion, I don't trust Nesta that much as a coach. It's true, Galliani, not often he did mistakes with coaches. A lot of time when he goes for a coach, he hits the coach. Look at what they did with Paladino at Monza. Fantastic. Paladino going to Fiorentina. But it's also true that we don't have to forget Gattuso, Inzaghi, Seedorf at Milan that were all flops. So pay attention there. I think as well they need to reinforce themselves otherwise will be extremely tough for them to remain in the first Serie A. We continue with the, the third team in that worst ranking. Now we go towards the 18th position, Empoli. They go with Daversa, that actually did really well at Lecce last season, also for them. Change of coach, Empoli that had a really tough, really tough Serie A last season. They were 17, avoided in that last day as well of Serie A, where there were a lot of teams that were risking from, a t I believe, the 20th until the 13th position. They were all risking until the last day. Well, Empoli... A bit better with Vitti, Vasquez, the goalkeeper, Esposito. They go with Daversa, I tell you. A good coach. Not bad, but when you lose Malé, Cancellieri, Berisha, Niang, the one that scored that avoiding relegation goal, well, it's not enough. It's not enough for me. Empoli at the moment, Mercato, not top. And it's not a team that can really, really do well. Then they are relying a lot on Daversa, which according to me is not enough. We go towards position 17. Torino, our cousins, Derby della Mole. Torino, it's a disaster. Torino is really a disaster. They lose Rodriguez, Okereke. They lose especially Buongiorno. And they replace Buongiorno with Coco. Coco from Las Palmas and Adams that is coming uh, from Southampton, free agent as well. Vanoli did fantastic last year in Serie B. So it's a really good coach that they are taking there, changing from Juric. So it's also another mentality, different methodology. Why not? But guys, 
Torino true ninth but I don't think that Torino were nine because of themselves I think it's also because of the bad quality of all the relegation teams so Torino can't be higher in that ranking one month to go for them otherwise it will be a disaster Parma I love when a Serie B team is promoted and they keep the core they keep the core starting with the coach and they also keep the core of the people that made sure that they promoted the team because I mean you work so hard to promote your team. You arrive, you celebrate it. So you, then you arrive in first division, then you change the entire team, which is bad. But it's true that with only Valeri and changing the goalkeeper, Suzuki, eh, Parma, they need to do a bit better. To remain in the highest category of Italian football, they will need to do a bit better, even if I really, really, really like the coach Pecchia. Ex-Juve, by the way. Mm. A bit short, a bit short for Parma. We continue with the first real big team that at the moment is doing a really bad mercato, Lazio. Lazio, they had the troubles of uh, changing Sarri last season, replacing him with Tudor. Tudor was not a big fan of Guendouzi. We know it, was not agreeing with Lotito. He preferred to say goodbye. They go with Baroni. That is a coach that I have always appreciated. Baroni, since that is trained and coached the youth academy from Juve, I always followed him and he did every time really well. He's missing a bit in that offensive football but in the back is really solid. And if the back remains more or less the same in the starting 11, they added Tavares from Arsenal, Castrovilli from Fiorentina that don't come from a lot of big seasons. It's, it was a promising player that lost a bit himself also with injuries, never made that step up. So going on betting on N. Rovella and Castrovilli there as double pivot, it's a team, don't forget, huh? two seasons ago, they were second in Serie A behind Napoli. Last season, seventh, so they already dropped a lot. If you see what the other teams are doing, probably they are not that strong in Mercato. And I finished telling you, if they lost two seasons ago, Milinkovic-Savic, this season they lose Luis Alberto, they lose Felipe Anderson, they lose Kamada, and they also lose Immobile, which was the captain, the soul of Lazio. Bad Mercato, according to me. Venezia, above them, come from Serie B. They go with Di Francesco. If you look at wh how many players are arriving, a lot of them end of loan. But it's a team that is, again, today too big, too huge, with Duncan and Oristano that are the only players that are potentially entering in the top 11. Oristano that is coming from Inter. They are trying to do a bit what they did with... Uh, Last year, Frosinone with Di Francesco, a team that is going with some players from big teams on loan or young players to launch, to try with a lot of rotation there. Look, it didn't finish really well for Frosinone last year. Venezia, they need to make clarity. Today, at today, even if they change a lot, I have no clarity about Venezia. We continue with that ranking. I'm totally lost in the, the ranking, so you know how uh, what number we are. Verona. Verona that changed smartly. They went for Zanetti, that is not a bad coach in Serie A. Of course, it's not a coach that will try to give you European qualification, but not a bad coach at all. They went with Fresi. They went with Harvey from Forzinone. They did really, really well. So keeping him in Serie A is really a plus. And then with Mosquera from Atletico. Bucaramanga, who, lo who left Cabal to Juve, we know it. Noslin went to the other team that we just spoke about, Tomori and Foloruncio that went back to Napoli. So is it a fantastic mercato? No, but it's a mercato that makes sense with the financial possibility that they have. They don't go with a total revolution. They change a the coach. They go with three players that are at least are making it immediately in the starting 11. So not bad for Verona. We go with Fiorentina, the other big team. That it's true. Huh? When you're watching that team and you say, oof, Pongratic. Colpani, Moiskin is absolutely not a bad Mercato, absolutely not. On top of that, if Italiano is leaving and you replace him with Paladino, it's absolutely not bad. You see that there are ideas, you see that they want to go for it. But on the other side, don't forget that they lost Duncan, Maxim Lopez, Belotti, Arthur, 
that was a starter at Fiorentina and played really well. Faraoni, Bonaventura, leadership there, goals from the distance, Castrovilli, Milenkovic, <sighs> that's extremely a lot. That's really a lot of players that they lost, replacing them, yes, with some players here and there. Too much important sales to compensate with what they have, and Paladino is telling us every single day at the microphones, I need reinforcement. On the other side, well, it's true that they are going for good Munson, but they could potentially lose Nico Gonzalez, or to Atalanta, or who knows, to Juventus. Bologna, Champions League this year. Thiago Mota made his decision. He's leaving. Copying the game of Thiago Mota would make totally no sense, so you are changing a few players. But if you lose Christensen, you don't sign permanently Salamakers that did really well. You lose Zirikse to Manchester United. Starts to be a lot. Eh? Ferguson that is injured for the first part of the season. And you replace them with Miranda from Betis. Hulm that didn't do that much well at Atalanta. Um, and you go with Dalinga that is a, a promise, a bet. <sighs> Also there, I think it's a bit short with all the competition that they will have to play last uh, next season. It's a bit short, according to me. So not at the moment the uh, calcio champagne mercato for Bologna and Italiano. But I'm really curious to see what Italiano will do with Bologna and if he learned a bit from his past mistakes of unbalanced team that are going totally on press upside and then making a lot of mistakes in the bag. Milan! It's true that you hear a lot of names uh, around Milan that are really great. For Fana, for example, etc., etc. But at the moment, they didn't sign. So we judge what they have at the moment. So it's uh, Milan that we put there in the middle. In the middle because Pavlovic is really beautiful. He's really beautiful name from Salzburg. Morata will be extremely useful. They are changing, actually, yeah, from Kier that is leaving, you replace it with Pavlovic, is an upgrade, you lose Giroud, you go with Morata, it's in a way an upgrade, especially in terms of age, then uh, let's see how they continue their Mercato, at the moment it's not enough for a team that was second last season, they were in a gap with Inter, all the teams were in a gap with Inter, they will need to compensate that gap a bit better if they want to do a bit better next season. I mean, trying to compete for a Scudetto. Now, it's true that a lot of people are curious about Fonseca. That wants a more aggressive team, a more offensive team. Let's see what Fonseca will be able to do with that team. Did really well in France. Flopped at the Roma. Really curious about that. Atalanta. But Atalanta, I read them right above Milan. Because at the moment, they just signed Zaniolo. They just signed Zaniolo, losing Holm, Adopo, Piccoli, Miranchuk. But it's a team that is working. It's a team that is working. You put Zaniolo, that is a bet that didn't do well at Aston Villa, didn't do... Ah, he actually did well at Galatasaray. Didn't do well at Roman either in a lot of moments. Zaniolo only for a team that is perfectly oiled. It's good. They will probably go far in a lot of competition, but it's not at the moment... The team that I'm saying to myself, okay, with that team, they have a real chance now to compete, to win Serie A, seriously. And that's a pity for them. No, I'm happy eh, for Juventus, of course, but that's a pity for them at the moment, at today. Especially if we know that Cope Manes is a player that he wants to go to Juve only. And losing Cope Manes, if you don't have a replacement, brrr, tough. Juventus, I put them there, eighth position in that ranking. Because if it's true that Juventus started turbo, Turbo, changing a lot. Di Gregorio, Cabal, Turam, Douglas, Luiz, even Adzic that we can mention if we want, losing a lot of players that are, were not ready to be starters at Juventus. But at the moment, Juventus is not complete. If you want more details about Juventus, go back to the video that I made this morning where I explained to you really a lot what is Juventus today and can become tomorrow with a potential signing. But today, I put them eight because we can't neglect a Turam, a Douglas Lewis, a Di Gregorio, but it's not enough. So eight at the moment for Juve that if they want to rank higher, they need to go really fast now. Napoli, slightly about, above Juve for one thing only. They change con coach Conte, play one competition only. And adding Buongiorno, fantastic defender, on top of Spinazzola, you did well. Eh? Spinazzola, I didn't want him at Juve, but in one competition only, if Conte will manage him well, 
with a mo- buongiorno at the moment Politano Kvaratskhelia they still have Ozyman if Ozyman leaves you will have Lukaku is it a downgrade absolutely yes but on the other side Lukaku is a typical Conte player he really wants him he would be happy to lose Ozyman to have Lukaku I think that they are not doing that bad for one competition only of course I was expecting a bit more but as they all said if we are able to keep Politano Kvaratskhelia Di Lorenzo we have a big team that two years ago they won Serie A and with the addition of uh, Conte that will be it of course they lost Zielinski but for one competition only with Lobotka and Gisa, I think they are more than enough Como so many changes so many changes and usually with so many changes I put them uh, at the end of the ranking in the bottom part of the ranking but this time I have to say that the changes Makes sense. Audero is a goalkeeper that I'm really emotionally linked to. I really love Audero. I'm happy that he's uh, gone from Inter. I think he will be a really good goalkeeper for Como. Varan, international and experience, together with Dosena, that come from Cagliari. So experience defend Moreno. Mazzitelli, Engelhard, Belotti, that is since Torino, a total disaster in terms of productivity. But they, they added... They added a lot of, uh, how can I say, experience in a team that will play Serie A. It's a mix mix. They have uh, Strefezza, they have Cutrone. So the players that are there in that starting lineup that come from Serie B were the best players. Fabregas, I'm really curious to see how we will coach in Serie A. It's a team I'm not sure if they will keep the division or not. But, the, you know, even if they went with a lot of signings, they are smart signings. I love what they did until today, especially also because we don't have to forget their team is nearly ready. Now they just train with a complete team to make sure that they are ready for the first game on the 19th of August against the US. So pay attention to what they did. Genoa. Genoa. Oh, they didn't change a lot, but did they had the need to change a lot. Gilardino, one of the six coaches that didn't change in Serie A. But Genoa, well, Zanoli, that is a really good one from uh, Napoli. They lost Strootman to that were toward the end of his career. Look, I like what they did. Keeping balance, keeping stability for a team that last year were 11th. They did quite well. They believed in their coach and they signed Golini as a goalkeeper. Don't forget about Golini that uh, was about to go to Monza. Then U-turn situation. He's going to uh, Genoa. Beautiful one as a first goalkeeper. No, they did what they had to do. Beautiful, beautiful Mercato for Genoa. Lecce, I like what Lecce did. You will tell me, Beppe, who are these players? Morente, Marcinski, Pierre, Gaspar, we don't know them. Eh, we don't know them, but the important thing is that the sporting director knows them, and he knows them really well, eh? because he's able to spot these kind of talents from teams like Tevili Rouen, Pierre, from Elche, etc., etc. They lost Pongracic, which is a big one, and Anquist, but the other teams are really good, eh? The other players, I think that Lecce did a really smart Mercato for Lecce that last season did really well. Now I'm really curious to see Gotti, ex Udinese, coach what he will do with that team. Beautiful Mercato for them. We go towards the podium, Roma, Roma, third position, because it's true that they did a fantastic entry Mercato at the moment with Mattias Soule, <laughs> with Dovbik, with Le Fay. strong, strong, really, really strong. Daniele De Rossi, I'm curious to see his preseason, his start of the season. But on the other side, I didn't put them in the first two positions. Why? Because they lost. Awar, Belotti, Spinazzola, Renato Sanchez, Heysen, Christensen, Asmun, Lukaku. You will tell me all of these players, in a way, they were upgraded with the new ones, which is totally true. And they did well to sell some of, probably all of these players. They did really well. They added players. Good, good from Roma. Beautiful work from Roma. But I will uh, shock you with position number two, Cagliari. Cagliari, according to me, with Nicola, that's an expert of these mid-table rankings, going with a few loans from Atalanta, Zorteo, Piccoli, Adopo, on top of that adding a few players like Luperto, Adopo, I already told you about Adopo. Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. I really like the Mercato of Cagliari. That has been done in a really smart way. We need, in that position, we go to that position. It's true that we are losing Nandes and Dosena in terms of experience, but we have compensated that experience with the knowledge of Serie A by Nicola, the coach of uh, Cagliari now. 
No, I think that I'm really seeing a beautiful balance into that team, a team that can do really well. I'm probably shocking you, I will probably be controversial, and then we finish with number one. According to me, Inter has the best Mercato so far. We didn't hear them a lot, huh? but their Mercato was done before starting. Taremi, Zielinski, that's it, in terms of big names, that's it. But they are replacing Sanchez and Klaassen. <laughs> and I told you everything already, huh? I told you everything. They have the same starting 11. They have the same coach. They already won the league last year. They reinforced even more their bench with two players that were for free. They have still margin to do something a bit later. At the moment, it's not only the team that is favored to win the Serie A, but it's also the team that reinforced themselves. So it will be extremely tough at the moment, at today on the 1st of August. Smart Mercato. Cheap Mercato, because also we know it. Uh, they don't have a lot of margin in terms of finances. But even with that, they don't lose players. And this is what Inzaghi said. My players, they don't want to leave. So I keep them and they just touch the bench where they could. <sighs> Hopefully something is going wrong for them in the next few weeks. Hopefully they are obliged to sell, who knows, Cianaloglu, Barella. And these players. Lautaro Martinez, Turam. Eh. Let's see. Guys, this was my ranking from worst to the best at today with Mercato that is crazy, Mercato that never sleeps, Mercato that is moving. Let me know how much you agree with me, how much you disagree with me. Grazie, forza. You fan.